What is up, everybody? Hello, we are live, Dan. Da My name's Ray. This is Dan. Where's Dan? Dan, you're under your desk, Dan. Sorry, dude. I was resetting my camera and I fell over. My bad. Oh, God. <laughs> that happens to Oof. us as we get older. No big deal. Yeah. And I'm the definition of it older. So, hi. Yeah. That's right. How'd you feel about your uh, colleague then uh, in the State of the Union last? No, I'm kidding. Welcome, everybody, to the show. This my, is the. <laughs> my peer. <laughs> your peer. Yeah. Uh, this is the uh, This Week in Real Estate, hosted by the Bearded Men of Real Estate. So, we got a ton of stuff to talk about today. We missed a show last week because I was out skiing in uh, <clears throat> in South Lake Tahoe, beautiful area, heavenly is the resort we were at. It was gorgeous, fun mountain, not the best mountain to learn on. There's like two green <laughs> runs there, but we did have one of our friends that went and learned on that mountain. We were super proud of him. He was doing blues by the end. Um. <clears throat> anyway, so if you notice a little bit of red nose, <laughs> that's what's happening. I got some wind burn out there because I was going so fast, Dan. Uh, Melissa Mara, she's joined us on YouTube. She says an oldie but a goodie. Aw, hey, she says. Look at, you can join us on YouTube, too. Look at his he, little nose. His little burnt, right? You can see it. <laughs> you can see it. I mean, you can tell he had the big goggles on, and he probably had a mask on, except for his nose was out. <laughs> That's exactly it. Everything was covered, and I didn't even need, like, a balaclava or baklava. Wait, which one is no, it? No, baklava is food, I think. <laughs> baklava is the food? I keep getting confused balaclava i don't know balaclava is what you wear all right so i didn't even so. need a balaclava because i had the beard it kept me nice and warm the whole time mike says too many drinks after the slips mike's also joining us on clubhouse so we're broadcasting in three places for those of you just joining us this is a real estate news show we're going to go into a lot of the news we're going to talk about a lot of real estate how everything that's happening in the world right now affects real estate but we're broadcasting in three different places one is facebook one is youtube and the other one is clubhouse so if you're following along Clubhouse, feel free to go up to the top where it says real estate networking. There's a little green house. Click that button and follow the club. That way you can be notified of other great rooms like this one in the club. And <clears throat> if you're following us on YouTube or Facebook, be sure you subscribe and follow. I think you even have to hit the bell these days if you actually want to be notified of when we're going live. And if you're watching the replay, you could skip all of this banter. And you could go down to the bottom in the description, you'll see a headline that we're going to talk about in a little timestamp. You can click on the timestamp and fast forward to that part of the show if you're tired of seeing Dan's cat. You can't skip the cat, though. They just do. I stopped trying with them. They're just wherever. It works. I, I mean, who knows? There may be some viewers out there that only watch for the cat. Yeah, they're like, I just want to see the cat. Oh, there he is. There's the fat one. <laughs> yeah, they're here. Wait, the fat one. still talking no, about the cat? No, no, no. Yeah. All right. <laughs> He's gonna break my Nolan Ryan bobblehead, dude. Oh, that's a sweet bobblehead. I know it's the best one ever. Right there, boom, <laughs> dude. Well, getting Dan, into didn't... fights at like forty-seven, still playing in the league. <laughs> How old was he when he retired? Oh, he was like I... Tom Brady old, right? Older. I think he was pushing here. <laughs> Let's. We'll start the show. I'll look it up. We'll start, okay. Um. Well, we have a ton of news to talk about. Let me let me give you a rundown. So we're gonna talk about the war. Of course, um, in the <clears throat> in the show title, uh, well, the thumbnail says Putin on the Fritz, which is <laughs> if you didn't see it, it's brilliant. It's great. I mean, I was thinking on that one, uh, but we are going to kind of talk about the uh, the fall of Russia, if that's going to happen, what that means for our economy, uh, because if you don't know, there's a war going on uh, that Putin picked with Ukraine and there's a lot of sanctions and everything <laughs> coming down on <laughs> Russia right Ukraine's now. Ukraine's like, no, I don't, I don't want a war with you. We're good, dude. We're just chilling. And we're fine. Yeah, they were, like, they were literally yeah. just chilling and got invaded. So we're going to see. We're going to talk about what happens. Um, <clears throat> now, so, so there is going to be somebody out there that's like, all you talked about with the war of Ukraine was how it affects real estate. So you should know that while we have a lot of personal feelings about the war, the, the whole show is about real estate. So it is <clears throat> in line with our show. To continue to talk about those things. So yes, we are going to talk about the war and it might seem a little insensitive because we're going to talk about how it affects real estate, but that is kind of what we do on the show. So um, it's, well, not and, we're, <clears throat> it's not that we're our, not sensitive to it. It's just that that's the topic of the show. It is. And, you know, in our, uh, we have a contributors group, you know, and I posted, uh, you know, I was trying to predict a headline, which is how will the conflict in Ukraine affect the U S market housing market, you know, and, 
Hey, there's Andy checking on Facebook and on Clubhouse. Nice. Uh, but you know, I I truly believe that's what head, and we have a headline today that's going to say that, and other ones. But it's you know, we're really honestly, we're not trying to be insensitive. It's just it's the market, and this is a thing that's going to affect the stock market, and then will it affect the housing market? We need How does to it affect about? housing. And the Fed was uh, interviewed today. I guess he testified. Is technically what happened. So we may get into some of that. We may have to save that for next week as people digest it and digest what he said. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, we are going to talk about the war. We are going to talk about how that impacts uh, real estate and could it impact America? What would the impact be? Is there more we could do uh, that would um, maybe cause more impact, but also uh, affect Russia more to get them out of this war? So we're going to have a little discussion on that. I would love your feedback, real estate professionals, lenders, Anyone out there that uh, that is in real estate, if, if you are a professional, I'd love your take on those things. Um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about what's happening currently to mortgage rates and uh, what that might mean for buyers and sellers. Um, this was an interesting headline because one of the things that we all know is that people were putting in offers and what were they doing? What's one of the things that they were waiving, Dan? Uh my buyers or other buyers? <laughs> Just kind of buyers in general around the uh, uh, Home inspection and they're home waving warranty. home inspection right. and home warranty. <clears throat> yeah. So here's a odd headline: seventy-seven percent of home buyers face unexpected repair cost in what? their first year. Sorry, G- give me a give me a better headline though, Ray. Alternate headline: What happens when you waive your inspection? <laughs> you might not know what needs to be repaired. So we're going to talk yeah. about that. Uh, then there's a couple of like industry insider info. So uh, UWM, United Wholesale Mortgage, is suing companies, uh, brokerages that are doing business with Rocket Mortgage. Uh, so Wait. we'll talk about what that means and how. Give me some sort of fa- sound effect on that one. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and then here's another one for you. Open door revenue rises more than 1,400%. But Right? That's a good headline. Oh yeah, let's okay. Leave it there though. Leave it there. Okay. Because have you you haven't read the article, have you yet? Oh well, there's an alternate. There's another part of the headline. Yeah. But losses mount too. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we're gonna talk about Porch. They're an interesting company. They've also mounted some losses, but they're keeping an eye on expansion. They're raising additional money. So we'll talk about exactly what Porch does. I think there's actually a place in the marketplace for that. That's gonna be really good. Um, and I would love to talk as I don't even know what they do. I think we've talked about them or mentioned them on the show. I don't really know what they do. They're just a real estate tech company or firm kind of thing that does a whole bunch of different stuff. But I'd love to hear if you know more about them or if, uh, you know, just break it down a little bit. Kind of like concierge services, I think. Anyway, it's an interesting company that I, you know, when it, whenever it was first announced, I liked it. But um, then we're going to talk about the judge, uh, Keller Williams versus Mark Willis. And uh, the recent ruling there. And we're also going to see what's happened in one of the largest companies in the world, seeing volume rise. The transaction numbers went down in Q4 last year. Is that normal? Is that not normal? I mean, and then Tom Tezak, he joins us. He says, Aloha from Georgia. Are you really from, which, in Georgia right now? Yeah, which would be oh. super <clears throat> weird because he's from Hawaii and now he's in Georgia with all of our other friends. We got a lot of Georgians on the panel today. Yeah. So, um, we do have some great people uh, in Clubhouse that I, I'm going to love when they join this discussion about what's happening in Ukraine, what's happening with the war, what that could mean for Americans and housing and consumers and all that stuff. But Dan, before we get into all these headlines, could you tell people what our show is actually all about? You know, I'd love to. Now, when Ray and I met here uh, during the Cold War back in the 80s, um, <laughs> I had had <laughs> I had had an idea. Oh, there you go. Tom's in Atlanta for a conference. Well, Tom, you got at least four four or five friends right yeah. here, right, ready to chill with you. So y'all should uh, reach out to Tom Tezak. If you're listening on clubhouse or following along in, uh, in uh, YouTube, go check him out on Facebook, connect with him. Y'all should connect. He's a good dude. Yeah. And if when he's for the most part, he's going to be a second market for you, but any, anyone selling and moving to Hawaii, he's got you covered. He's your dude. Guarantee um, he's in a flowered Hawaiian shirt. Gar- guaranteed. <laughs> I, I would, I would put a hundred percent certainty. A hundred percent. Uh, I think you have to like you move there and they just hand you like, here's your new wardrobe. Yeah, it's a it's a lay and new shirts. 
Yeah, it's it's a lay, new shirts, some shorts, and some rainbows, and that's your that's your outfit. That's what you wear now. So <laughs> this is what you go to business meetings in. Um, but no, we Ray and I met here on the interwebs uh, a bunch of year, handful of years back. You know, yep. we're on we're on show what hundred one hundred and seventy nine today. Whew. You know, we we've been doing this. We're experienced. We've been doing this for a minute. Uh, but when I met Ray, uh, I obviously noticed. Uh, you know. <clears throat> what we're all noticing the nose there, but I noticed something mm-hmm. very interesting about him. What's that, Daniel? He's never been to a Yankees game. I haven't. I actually, I've never even been to a pro baseball game. <gasps> That's I was, so I was going to start with that, but I was like, yeah. no, he's been to something. No, nothing. I've never been to, I've only been to one pro sports game. And if you follow me on Instagram, Ray Zorbeck, R-A-Y-Z-O-R-B-A-C-K, you can actually see the first pro game I went to. It was with Glenda Baker, Zachary Faust, uh, oh, Phil, Katie, like uh, Tim. So some fun people. And I got to go to a Mavs game. I'm not a Mavs fan, but it was a fun. Right. It was fun environment, fun atmosphere. Wow, yeah. dude, I did not know that. So, well, Ar- so Arkansas doesn't have any pro teams. Actually, right. our pro team is the Arkansas Razorback College, right. and they're pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean. They couldn't compete with a pro team, but I really like them. And so well, that's, I mean, you know. your baseball team could probably beat the angels right now. So I think they're, <laughs> there's, so, there's some, our baseball team is legit. Good. They're having a little trouble getting, getting it all going this year, but I think they will be great. Our basketball team is legit good right now. Our football team is going to be better this year. So we got a lot of positives, but we don't You're doing great in softball, doing wonderful in softball, a lot of talent, just not enough economy to support a pro team. So because of that, everyone had to choose like a pro team. The pro team I chose was the Bears growing up. Okay. Because Just because they were uh, on a lot or? Well, so I think they won in 84, right? Uh, 85, I was yeah. 85. So I was two or three when they won. Yeah. And my favorite player was Refrigerator Perry, William Refrigerator Perry. The, my yep. name is William Ray Ellen. So my dad called me Icebox, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little stocky kid. I was going to say, yeah. I don't want to judge, but I'm probably a stocky yeah. kid. Yeah. So I chose the Bears as my favorite team. And therefore, I also love the Bulls and I also love the Cubs. And so I've been a Chicago fan. I've never been to Chicago, never been to a Chicago <laughs> game. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So my first football team, I wasn't really into football. My buddy is from Miami. This is like <laughs> mid 80s. And I was like, I became a Dolphins fan. So I'm a Dolphins fan. And then as I got older and got into uh, actual football, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. I just naturally hated the Raiders. So that's cool. So I went with the Rams. I've been a Rams fan forever. But my first football team wasn't a local team. I was like, well, he's really into it. So we'd get up every Sunday and watch, you know, yeah, uh, uh, football. And I got into the <laughs> Dolphins. And it also turned out it's when they had uh, Dan Marino. He was a pretty good quarterback. Uh, yeah. yeah, he's but, okay. Uh, so I was going to say that, yeah, because if you don't know, Ray's from Arkansas, and I was going to say he's never been to a pro baseball game, and I didn't yeah. know, much less never been to a professional baseball game, but a professional anything until that was, what, three yeah, that weeks was ago? this year. Yeah, that was, uh, well, actually, it was in, uh, when was that? It was at a, a video mastermind in, like, October or something. Wow, that's, that's yeah. amazing. So <laughs> part of the reason I do that is I say something and I get Ray to tell a story, usually... Or I get to learn something. And I've known Ray for, geez, almost five years. But uh, yeah. who asked? Uh, how My, did you two meet? So this is how we met. We were in a uh, real estate group. Um, and there's thousands <laughs> and thousands of agents in this group. And Dan comments on something and kind of trolls somebody. So I'm immediately attracted to him. Yeah, because, like a, it, was a, it wasn't an obvious troll. It was a subtle troll. Subtle trolls Ray are went, the best. Ooh. Yeah. And so I trolled Dan a little bit. I said, right. hey you look like somebody and I posted a gif of the red bearded guy from game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. And he Tor- was like, Oh yeah. Foreman yeah. giants mean. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I get that. And then we just kind of struck up a friendship because we were both talking about how we were light trolling. Yeah. Um, the best troll is when someone can't tell like, yeah, are you, are you really trolling? Or are you just right. curious? about? <laughs> yeah. That's when you, the best. Yeah. When you, we did that a lot. You know, group. you're trolling and they don't mm-hmm. get it. That's the best troll in the world. And then, so, and then lab code agents kicked us out. So whatever. Yeah. And then that's where we found. <laughs> I kept getting kicked out of there 
I think I got kicked out of lab coats like <laughs> Two or three four times. or five times. They kept inviting me back in. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm gonna go back in. <laughs> but, but I mean, they were just it was fun. But Mark yeah. says, uh, "The Bears bear down." Diehard Bears fan as well. Even have a tap. Really? Wow. I knew I liked you for some strange reason. Well, there you go, Mark. Yeah. And he's uh, <clears throat> really, you know, to, not to be too serious, but he's, uh, we learned this week that he's, is it this week, last week, that he's uh, half Ukrainian. So, yeah. We're going to be talking about that. Mike yeah. says, have you done uh, 23 and me yet to see if it's a bond or something more? <laughs> Brother from another mother? I mean, <clears throat> my dad traveled. <laughs> Norm, Norm, chime yeah, in, Norm. Norm. Are we brothers? Yeah, Norm's it, Norm. You ever been to Arkansas? <laughs> I mean, okay. So my dad started going bald at about twenty-eight. When did you? Because maybe there's a thing. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> but anyway, that's you're getting lots of stories, and if you hate the banter and you're watching the replay, you can click on the the little uh, timestamps below. But uh, I obviously noticed that uh, Ray's a beautifully bearded man. And I also noticed that he loves giving value up front to not only his clients, but just to humans in general, which I love to do as well. So the show's about being more as an agent, but also being more as a human. There you go. And one <laughs> of the ways we believe in being more is to know what in the world is happening so that you can help your clients make a better decision with one of the largest investments of their entire life. Because if you don't know, and you claim to be a professional real estate agent, there's a disconnect. You should know that way you can advise your clients better. And we got you covered. And we you have, have a lot of great moderators. moderators. Dude, like ask anyone in our, uh, you know, our Be More group or just Ray, how many articles I'm sending during the week? Because I'm always searching. I'm just curious. Yeah. And I find a lot of stuff from like San Francisco. And then like, where did I send some from? Like Wisconsin. I found an article that's yeah. interesting. I look for smaller, not mainstream news or not, uh, um, not national news just to get little stories and you can really dig up some cool stuff. I find it extremely interesting. Yeah. It's funny. If you want to join the contributors group, let us know. We'll throw you in there. It's a little chat. <laughs> nope. Here. Nomadic norm, by the way. Yep. Nomad <laughs> Nomadic norm. <laughs> All right, Dan, are you ready to get in the show? Yeah. Wait, we don't have a sound effect yet. Do we? we have to do this, right? No, we get, yeah. Okay. I got to record okay. it or something or I don't, I don't know how we're going to have to do it. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's go. <laughs> didn't someone find it two weeks ago and send it to us i forgot so okay so matt lamarche found it malarche but but it's not one that i could download ah uh, <clears throat> yeah i found the sound but we got to be able to download it as like a mp3 or wave or something like that so what you're saying is malarche could have done better <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all your efforts, though, Matt. We appreciate <laughs> we the effort. You, dude. All right. Out of uh, all the Georgia people, I love all of you. I'm not going to say who I love the most, but Matt is the most fun to mess with. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's, uh, let's talk about this war thing. All right. So everybody knows about the war in Ukraine. Uh, Putin, five days ago, launched a war and an attack with Ukraine. Uh, I have been honestly glued to my television. Uh, watching all of this, wondering how it's going to play out, how it's going to affect us, what's going to happen, how can we help? And uh, if you don't watch some of this stuff and and like refugees and seeing what's happening, just a warning, it'll probably break your heart. But uh, we all know that's happening. Um, relatively unprovoked war, I think you could say. And the UN is um, taking some action against them now. Uh, there have been sanctions all over the place, basically uh, locking up the central bank for Russia. Uh, Putin then says, well, no one can export money uh, from Russia in the amounts of over $10,000. So there's a whole kind of uh, economic impact that's going to be felt around the world. And our question is, what, it, what does this mean for the U.S. economy? What does this mean for housing in general? Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of things that I want to just kind of preface out there that it's all so up in the air that there's two big things. I'm One is the cost of energy. I think uh, there was a study done, I, I couldn't find it before the show, but they said that 77% of Americans would be in favor of paying high gas prices if it really put the screws to Putin and Russia, meaning that we no longer purchase I mean, from them. I mean, war is profitable, <laughs> profitable nowadays. I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole with you guys, but I mean, if it gets us to agree to higher gas prices, why not? Yeah, if we agree to higher gas prices and then we put the screws to Russia and no longer buy 600 and something 
barrel billion barrels of oil a day or whatever it is. It's a crazy yeah. 600 something million barrels of oil. Crazy number of oil that we uh, get every day. If we <clears throat> if we do put a stop to that, then gas prices are going to go up outrageously. But however, if we start the domestic exploration, because we believe that maybe <clears throat> it's better at this time to be a little bit energy independent instead of purchasing energy from a dictator that funds a war against innocent people, then um, <laughs> we could do that in 2019. Well, <clears throat> well, I mean, that's it, right? Yeah. In 2019, we were almost energy independent. I think we were actually exporting oil at that time. Um, there was all kinds of stuff like Keystone Pipeline and Amwar and all this other stuff that we were attempting to do. Wait, wait, wait. Can, I, <clears throat> can you make money off of selling oil? Yeah. What? There's actually a lot of goods that you can create and huh. then make money off of. But I the didn't know that. <clears throat> but the big thing is that we actually had excess ex excess oil and we were exporting oil. So one of the big concerns exporting is if we excess. stop buying oil, then it could have more sub I, so this is this is weird to me because people are like, oh, if America stops buying oil, then it's gonna drastically increase the prices on for oil for Europe. I, I don't understand. I mean, wouldn't you have excess supply and with a, a lot of supply, the prices would actually drop for Europe? I don't know. Maybe they're just saying that OPEC would jack the prices in order to make the same amount of money from a from selling fewer barrels. Whatever. <clears throat> yeah. So it's gonna have to be something because they're gonna have to even out their costs. It's not all of a sudden right. go down to it going to go down to a dollar a gallon ever again right it's just not it's not going to do that one can hope yeah <clears> so I, hope, say, I remember that when i was a kid when i first started driving so let's say uh we do produce a lot of oil and then can export oil and then we actually are selling oil as a country it becomes one of our exports that's when gas prices would normalize again but it would take some time so th that's one big thing i'm looking at so far biden says that that's not off the table to further squeeze Russia by not purchasing their oil and funding the war. I would hope that's not off the table. I would hope that's actually a decision to be made soon, but that's just me. So <clears throat> if that happens, then a couple of things I think are going to happen as it relates to housing. One is the amount of disposable income that people currently have is going to decrease because they're going to be spending more money for the energy that they use. So if that happens, then uh, like a buyer that I was talking to yesterday, he had $2,000. He's looking to purchase a house. <clears throat> All he had was $2,000 in cash. So he's got an inspection and appraisal that's going to eat up about $1,000. So now he has $1,000 left. I'm sure he's got some moving expenses. Let's say it's on the cheap, 500 bucks. So he's only got $500 left, which means he's going to have to get a seller somehow to pay his, to pay his closing costs, which is not unheard of in Arkansas. We do that, but usually you have to put in an insanely high price and hope it appraises. But if that happens, then he could get his closing costs paid for. <clears throat> but if he loses the rest of his disposable income, then what? So that's one fewer buyer in the marketplace. So I'm wondering if the increase in energy prices due to the war is going to decrease the number of buyers, thereby decreasing the competition in the marketplace. What say you, Dan? I would say, so in my opinion, which I don't know anything, but I have an opinion on stuff anyway. Uh, it's going to kind of depend on what the stock markets do because people like to invest there. And whether you have, you know, uh, more safe stocks or more volatile stocks, you know, bigger risk, bigger reward type of deal. Um, you know, I think people are going to try to pull their money from that and kind of turn into a little bit of a, I'm going to put this money under my mattress for a little, just for a little bit, I'll get back into it. I want to support our country and, and, and bet on the stocks and stuff, but I'm just going to pull it and then I'm going to hold it. And maybe they'll freeze and kind of wait to see what happens. Maybe, maybe they take that money and put it into real estate because it's a little more of a long-term investment, a, a more solid investment, a little less volatile. Cause honestly, even if you have the safer stocks, they still go up and down. Right. So I would predict there, I'm, you know, you're going more on the kind of everyday guy in a very specific situation. I don't have any kind of ex or not current experience on like a, a current instance where that's happening. But I'm, I kind of thought when I read this or uh, read this and then when the, the war is kind of going on um, that the stock market would kind of become less of a focus and maybe real estate will benefit from that or huh. people just throw their money under their mattress and hold on to it for a little while. Do you so? Uh, and Tom makes a good observation. He says, I love that private industry is also pulling out of Russia. Yeah, that's been really cool to see too. Some of the big yeah. major corporations are saying, hey, we're not going to sell to you anymore. We're not going to be there anymore. 
uh, Antonio. He's checking in with up, Antonio. So in, in the instance, um, let's say that the regular guy doesn't have as much disposable income, the stock market, as you're talking about, it may not have a ton of focus, but what, in the time of war, don't people tend to pull out of a lot of foreign investment, not just like removing their company from Russia, but don't people pull funds out of foreign stocks because of the uncertainty and then put them back in to, to companies and countries that they believe are that more are secure, here. just like the U S yeah. And so possible. if you have more buyers coming into the stock market, it may have gone down because we're seeing what's happening in energy and stuff like that. But I can't help but think that a lot of the investors are going to be pulling money out of foreign exchanges, foreign stock because yeah. of the uncertainty and the volatility and yeah. reinvesting it back in American companies that have most of their sales happening here in America. Right. Yeah, and that because it there's going to be a I mean there's always a big USA 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 sentiment, but I think there's this is going to give a bigger groundswell to that. So I think you might be onto something because they got money somewhere, you know. And I'm not necessarily talking about the disposable income. I'm talking more about I'm an investor and I got my money somewhere. And if I have it overseas, maybe it's time to pull it back over here and focus on that. Yeah, I like that. Mike's checking in. He says Bent Crude is hundred and eleven dollars right now, sixty four dollars a year ago today. It's a mix of inflation, demand, production, and world events. So yeah, we haven't <clears throat> we haven't talked about inflation yet, uh, but that is one of the big topics. I think of the State of the Union last night. It should have been one of the big topics. Uh, it has been a big topic as the uh, Fed was uh, testifying today. One of the quotes that ran across the Chiron at the bottom was that the Fed can't uh, predict when inflation will ease up. But even with the war and increase in energy prices, um, increase in interest rates were still coming. So it looks like <clears throat> it's now, crazy I might be, is, is, so I was at the slopes last week, years ago, only rich people went to the slopes because normal people didn't have that kind of money. Right. It seems like normal people have that kind of money because the lines were super long and full of normal people like me in the middle of the week, <clears throat> in the middle of the week. Yeah, lots of normal people out there. Yeah. So is, uh, this is going to make me sound like a bad guy, but is some inflation bad? Is some, is some inflation not good? Because it's going to put the purchase of some products out of reach and kind of resituate the marketplace and the GDP and things like that. If, is it, <clears throat> and when those products become out of reach for some, does that not decrease the pressure on production and then allow things to normalize more? No, normalize, but then also doesn't that take a chunk of demand out of the market? And then if I'm, if I was like, it's $5 for my widget, but the demand was so high, I bumped it to 10. If there's less demand, don't I have to adjust my prices down or do I just keep at that high level and making a solid product? Well, that's kind of what um, Apple's doing. Right. Right. They're raising prices. Uh, Tom C. Sex says, Ray, you're normal. Yes, I am Tom. Well, th that's different though. Maybe, maybe actually below average to, to tell you the truth. Tom. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint, but <laughs> all right. So let's get into what Tom says here. He says from a second home perspective, higher fuel prices translates into higher airfare and less tourist, which may negatively affect resort markets. <clears throat> I think along with that, Tom, is the uncertainty too, because in times of uncertainty, people travel less. Like we saw at the very beginning of the whole, uh, the pandy uh, that happened, the entire, you know, thing we went through and that we're still going through some say. Yeah, <laughs> some, some, some. Right, right. One of the first things that happened were the second home markets and the Airbnbs and the resorts and hotels really struggled because people weren't moving due to the uncertainty. So I think in two ways, the second home market could be negatively impacted. One is from the less disposable income, less travel, but the other is from the perspective of, hey, you know what? We had a trip planned to go to Hawaii and see some properties that we're thinking about buying, but the World War III might break out. And due to that, let's just chill on that for another year and let's wait, which is great news for people looking to invest in a second market, you should call Tom Tezak because that may mean that some of those markets go on sale temporarily again, 
until everything, you know, kind of bears out like it has with the whole pandy. One of the things we learned in that is that now that you can work from anywhere, why not work from Hawaii? Yeah, right. Like, you know, I just sold a house for my friend who is from the cheese toast, uh, Virginia. And he was like, his company's here. His, uh, uh, it's not his company, but he's a, he's a video game developer. And since the pandy, he's been working from home. So like two years and he's like, I'm just going to make all this money that I, I bought my house less than two years ago. I've made 150 grand. <laughs> I'm going to just go back and, you know, and he, so he still works here and flies in every two months but yeah. he's having a blast he's having an absolute blast back where he's from and i'm following him on instagram and you know why not and then you got tom right here what tom is maui right tom yeah i think so yeah so i mean why not yeah. if you know if, if you've been working home work from wherever you want work from wherever uh he says uh, yes work from hawaii has created an entirely new dynamic. Used to be a Maui, used to be a second home spot, but for many people, those second home spots are becoming first home spots. Yeah. So I have, uh, <clears throat> I have another set of sellers right now, considering they bought a house in uh, North Carolina. I forget the city, but they said it's a tiny little city and they, they paid like 180 grand for pretty, you know, you know, it's a 1500 square foot house, but it's, you know, hundred years old. It's really dialed yeah. on pretty good sized land. And the locals were like 180,000. What are you doing? But they, they live here in Rancho and their house is worth over a million now. And they bought it for like 400 grand 20 years ago. So they're like, no, oh, we're good. 180 grand is fine. <laughs> wow. You know, and they're considering like, dude, do we just, once the kids get out of high school, let's just go and, and chill. And they said they love that little town. So why not? Yeah. Mike said, if you think the dollar is going to weaken, we've doubled the money. If you think the dollar is going to weaken, is it going to weaken? We've doubled the money supply. Then foreign investment might be better. We double <clears> the <throat> money supply means we just printed more, right? Like, yeah, which weakens the dollar, right? If you if weakens the dollar by half, it should. Then foreign investment might be better. Weird. He said. Like, just make, like we owe all this money to ourselves. Just say we don't owe it to ourselves and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we owe it to people like China and oh, Russia. There you go. And, and that well, uh, maybe not for long. Kind of, <laughs> turns out that's kind of tied our hands a little bit. So, the other thing that's happening, I just kind of want to coast over this. One of the reasons, and a lot of <clears throat> friends and stuff are like, why aren't we just bought? Like, there was this 40 mile train of Russian yeah, uh, yeah, convoy yeah. troops and everything. Everyone's in that picture, right? Yeah. And okay. how frustrating was it for our military just to be looking at that picture, thinking, like, okay. Like just a couple of planes and that that's gone and that no longer bothers anyone in the Ukraine, but it does tend to break out <clears throat> a worldwide war with a, uh, with a power that has nukes. Yeah. And that and is they're, why they're on high alert. Now he moved them up to high alert. Yeah. And I think that is why uh, we haven't invaded basically in the past nukes for the countries kind of were a good thing because it's called, they called it mutually insured destruction, mutually assured destruction. <laughs> if one country nukes another, then this country is going to nuke you and Hey, you're both done. So because you both have the nukes, you're not going to fight each other like that. See, I live in a world where <clears> I'm like, well, what if no one had them? <laughs> what if, I know that's not realistic and it's the hippie coming out of me, but I'm like, it's just so weird. Like, all right, well, I'm going to get some too. And then we go, well, that country can have them. But then that country yeah. sells them to another country that should have never had them. And now we're all screwed. Well, Ukraine got rid of theirs and they're probably wishing right now they didn't. Uh -huh. But so, so now they don't have the threat, right? It's the threat that stops people from, it's just like, you know, the right to bear arms. Like somebody's probably not going to come into my house in Arkansas because they think I'm going to shoot them. Bear arms <clears throat> or bear arms? Bear arms. Bear yeah. arms. Bear arms. Rrr, bear arms. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. all right <clears throat> ryan bokros he says uh, inflation weakening the dollar turns that 400k house into a 372k house as time goes on seven percent inflation that doesn't include the interest on the loan well historically as inflation increases so too do house prices so historically what we've seen is as inflation goes up home prices also go up so we should be okay on that <clears throat> wonder but, what Susie has to say on this. <clears throat> yeah, let's wait for Susie Orman's take. 
Yeah. All That's right. That's what I'm waiting for. So um, just, just to kind of sum up, <clears throat> we're keeping our eyes on what's happening. The, um, you know, if we only see a moderate increase in energy prices, then I don't think it really impacts the sub- disposable income as much. I don't really think it impacts travel as much. So then the only thing we're looking at is volatility. And if people, if consumers are so confident in going about their purchase, even with a war breaking out in, uh, in Russia, Ukraine, and who else, wherever else it may break out. Uh, and so by that's the way, kind of, can, can we give a shout out to Zelensky? Yeah, uh, that dude is a hoss. He's like, I'm in. I'm just, I'm good. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm, in fact, I'm going to put on a vest. I'm going to go fight. because I'm really hoping he makes it through all of it. Because uh, as, as leadership in that area goes, it's probably some of the best I've ever seen. Uh, turns out actors can be good leaders. Yeah. And did you see... Uh, that was a there, nod to Ronald Reagan. But Well, he was good. He created the whole war on drugs thing, though. And remember, the drugs won. Just say no. Yeah, that's all you have to do. Just say no. <clears throat> he also <clears throat> defeated the Cold War the first time. All right. So <clears throat> let's defeated. keep going. Defeated. It is defeated, right? Yeah. All right. So he, let's talk about some of the impact. He won the actually. Cold War? I guess you could say he won it. He ended it. He ended, ended it. it. There you go. He ended, ended it. the Cold War. There ended it. All right. So let's talk about what the headlines they're saying is happening as a result of all this stuff. All right. Mortgage rates plunge just as home prices set another record. So we've been, I feel like this is like a redone headline. Uh, mortgage yeah. rates are sinking as markets contend with the ramifications of Russia's attack on Ukraine. And that means home prices are likely to continue surging. The average rate on the popular 30 year fixed mortgage had risen to a full percentage point from the start of this year up to last Friday when it hit 4.18%, according to Mortgage <laughs> News Daily. Just getting farther and farther, <clears throat> no, further yeah. and further away from Ray's prediction. <laughs> but then it fell to 3.9. Yeah. Um, all right. So in December and January, uh, for sale inventory continued to be the lowest we've seen in a generation, said Frank <laughs> Knopfleth, uh, chief economist of CoreLogic. Buyers uh, have continued to bid prices up for the limited supply on the market. Are you still seeing limited supply where you are? <laughs> I'm seeing no supply. I just, you know, I was telling Ray before the show, I have a lot of buyers. You know, I wouldn't say they're flooding the market, but my way, you know, I'm getting a lot of buyers right now. I don't really know why that is, <laughs> but uh, I have a handful of new, brand new buyers right now. And I set up a new search for clients that want to be here in Rancho or the next city over, which is Upland. And they don't have any crazy criteria. They have a great budget of just over $900,000. And there's just, there's not anything. I did a search. We have essentially 12 days of inventory. Yeah. So inventory woes are still, still the thing, but at least the lower rates seem to uh, continue on. So I want to cover this article too. They don't want to go to the people that we have uh, waiting in clubhouse to speak. I want to hear your take both on the, uh, both on the Russian fight and war and also what's kind of happening in our market. But this is the second headline we saw about this. It said, weak mortgage demand could get a big boost as Ukraine crisis causes interest rates to drop sharply. Uh, mortgage demand, uh, this is the most recent article, by the way. That other one, I think, was from the beginning of the week or the end of the week last week. Yeah, like this 24th one is today. or something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. This one says mortgage demand stalled last week as interest rates hits a multi-year high but it will likely change quickly. Rates are now falling due to the f- uh, fast due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Mortgage application volume was essentially flat compared with the previous week. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association seasonally adjusted index, borrowers had no incentive to refinance and home buyers continue to face high prices and fear lack of listings, which is just what Dan said. Um, <clears throat> mortgage applications to purchase a home fell 2% for the week and were 9% lower over a, a year ago. Buyers are now seeing prices appreciate uh, at the fastest pace in more than 45 years, up just over 19% from a year ago in January. Wow. Wow. Those numbers are crazy. Yeah. Up 19% still. All right. So um, flash your mic if you want to uh, say something or you can raise your hand. I'd love to hear uh, your take on what's going on in Ukraine um, and how that's going to impact. Okay, Ron, I see you flashing your mic. I'll come to you then, uh, Kendrick. I saw you flash your mic too. So go ahead, Ron. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Ron Bruno. I am based in Dallas, Texas. I'm a residential loan officer, licensed to California and Texas. 
Okay, so with interest rates, they were down yesterday, but they're back up again today. <laughs> so yeah, they dropped down to 3.9, but they're now at 4.02. So if you are trying to time the market on a daily basis, there could be an opportunity to get in at a lower interest rate. But if you're out there home shopping and making offers, by the time you make your offer, uh, the rate might be a little bit higher. So it's not a, uh, with what's happening with Ukraine, it's not a, uh, you know, something that is a, a, a trend, uh, even in the short term, that we can readily follow uh, and say, oh, okay, interest rates are down. So now's a good time to go out and, and buy a home because there's a war going on. That's not really what's driving um, the interest rates on a long-term basis. Uh, if, if you're a trader, yeah, you could make some pretty strategic moves if you're buying and selling bonds. Uh, so just wanted to, to add those thoughts. Do you think that the increase that we saw today was on the expectations of what the Fed would be testifying? Or are we going to see even more increases after what he said today, you think? So today, uh, it's the Fed testifying. So it's, it's talking about how they said that they're going to be raising interest rates, right? So they're going to raise the Fed funds rate. Um, it's the concern about rising inflation. Uh, it's the concern about oil. Uh, Russia was about three or four bullet points below uh, <laughs> the, the main pieces. And you also have, uh, you know, a positive jobs report. So you have all of these factors that are pointing to higher interest rates. Interesting. Sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. So, <clears throat> so we have all of these factors still pointing to higher interest rates. Uh, you know, that's that was funny that you said it that way because it was kind of low on the totem pole of what they talked about as far as what the Fed was talking about. Today. Yeah, it's I interesting. Mean, <clears throat> inflation was a big focus. Um, so that's that's great. Thanks for the perspective there, Ron uh, Kendrick. Man, I saw you flash your mic. Uh, what do you think is going to happen to the economy? What have you seen so far for your buyers and sellers currently with the uh, conflict in Ukraine? Hey, Ray. Uh, thanks for having me up. So it hasn't really uh, affected us directly, not not yet at least. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Maybe you can't hear me. Hello? Oh, man. We lost him. Well, that's okay. We'll come back to you when you're back, Kendrick. Thanks, Shani. Uh, so, Shani, did you flash your mic? What's up? Yeah. Hey, Ray. So for me, I have not heard one peep from one client. It's no one, even um, even with interest rates, I haven't really, I've sent people articles, buyers I have. And, but really, I haven't, it hasn't trickled down yet for me. I haven't seen anything. No indication you would think it's run a different planet. You know, people have news is important to people. What's going on in the world? The world events, which usually do shape the financial markets, I mean, just like with the stock market, you know, down for just temporarily, very temporary. And right, it's like the same thing is happening. So um, I think global news, in fact, is, is changing. So I have not seen it yet. Interesting. Um... I feel like everyone is watching, but I only feel that way because I'm, I'm watching constantly a lot. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> as a matter of fact, before the show, so I got this new monitor that I'm looking at and literally it's, it's insane. Just, it's from here all the way to there. Like it's <laughs> 55 inches of, of glory. And it's three feet in front of Ray. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's close, but I, you know, the show is just right here. So it's perfect. Um, but before the show, I had on uh, BBC, CNN, Fox, CNBC, MSC. Like I had all the squares happening and I could easily like mute and unmute as they were going off and on the commercial, just watching the whole thing unfold. You know, CNBC was all about the Fed, what was going on in the Fed. Uh, CNN was all about the refugees. Um, MSNBC was blaming a Republican. Fox was all about the State of the Union. Like, so just trying to get like <laughs> all kinds of input and it's just what I, we should do. Yeah. And I realized I was probably the only one in the world doing that, but you know, maybe yeah, not, yeah, but it's yeah. kind of, but what I do know is that my clients aren't. So whenever I meet with a client, 
like I have a, a builder now that's like, Hey, let's go ahead and list it. And here's how we're going to list it. And he, he told me the price and everything. And then I could just inform him like, Hey, here's what's happening in the market. You know, here's what's happening to rates. Here's what we anticipate. Supply is still low. This is still happening. He didn't care because yeah, he's kind of watching and checking in with it, but it's not like a main part of his life. But there are some people that are weird like me that are going to be engulfed in everything that's happening. And for agents to be able to communicate to them, you know, here's the reality of it. And here's, you know, if you need to sell, you need to sell. So let's, here's the best case scenario. Here's how to do it. And I think that would be real comforting to those types of people. If you can relate with them on those topics, hopefully by watching this show, you'll get enough information just to kind of relate with them back to them. That's a good point, Shani. Thanks for joining the show. Yeah. Well, and I, <clears throat> that was the first, you know, when Ray's like, Hey buddy, when I first jumped on with him here, the first, first question was, have you been glued to your TV? <laughs> yeah. That was my first question. Cause you know, I have. I, yeah. The truth of the matter is I've been too busy with, uh, between real estate and softball. I haven't been able to really have time, which is good. Cause I would do what Ray does and I would just lose myself in it, you know, but yeah. so I've kind of kept it focused on real estate with the, like what's going to happen to real estate kind of thing. Cause you do have to stay informed and there's a lot of moving parts happening right now. Yeah. Scap, did you want to say something? I thought I saw you flash your mic, but maybe I was wrong. He always does. If you want to chime in, feel free to chime in. Well, I mean, I wasn't flashing my mic, but I mean, I could chime in. I mean, yeah, <laughs> as you guys learned, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I'm obviously my whole family's glued to this, uh, being that we are Ukrainian descent. Uh, my, my grandmother, uh, my mom's side was, one of 13 uh, brothers and sisters to come over from the Ukraine way back in the day. Um, so, yeah, we still have some extended family over there. Uh, so we're just kind of following and trying to get in touch with people and, and see what's going on from, from their perspective over there. We haven't been successful as of yet. But, uh, you know, we're just following along, trying to see what's going on with everything. It, it definitely hits close to home, uh, you know, with our with, – you know, with our family and, and everything we grew up with, with the Ukrainian side. So, uh, you know, just, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, you can't do much, you know, sitting over here. So. Yeah. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for giving us your perspective on that. And we'll definitely be uh, watching out for news from, from your side too. Hopefully everybody's okay and gets out. Okay. Um, it kind of, so for me, like I've, I got this uh, wall mounted, wooden map up on and it's like stretches one of my entire walls it's really cool except there were like uh one of the pieces is kind of a little bit warped and uh so i said i'd reached out to the company a couple of weeks ago i was like hey this piece is kind of warped they're like no big deal it was alaska so i was trying to get alaska to fit fit flat but it wouldn't do it because glue wouldn't hold so it kept just kind of coming up a little bit i reached back out to them um yesterday after i got back in town i was like hey i'm back in town now we figure out what to do and they're like well we unfortunately have lost contact with our supplier can you fix it yourself i was like what do you mean lost contact with your supplier and it's like well the people that made it are in ukraine like, yeah i'll fix it myself yeah so that was my first like wow this is uh you know this that's for me like i'd been talking to this company it's a great company i really like they were really good uh, top notch customer service, responsive, super, like they're great. And for them to say like, yeah, we're, we're done. That's yeah, that's tough. Uh, so hopefully, uh, Ukraine gets out of this sooner rather than later. We'll keep an eye on what's happening with Russia, how that affects our energy prices, how that affects the dis disposable income <clears throat> and, uh, you know, mortgage rates, all that stuff too. So we'll just keep an eye on it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it ends quick. Um, <clears throat> so here's one of the reasons why it's important to keep your mind on some of this stuff. Um, and you don't have to dwell on it. Like if you're not a newsy and don't like watching 80, 86 different channels at the same time, you don't have to. But here's a reason to keep your, uh, your eye on it coming up here. Whenever big stuff happens in real estate, there's always some kind of consequence. And as we know, the real estate market as of late, has been a little hairy. 77% of home buyers face unexpected repair costs in the first year of ownership survey finds. Here's how to head off surprise expenses. Without even reading the rest of the article, 
as real estate professionals, do we know how to head off surprise inspection costs? Yeah, you, you should know what's going, what you're getting into by maybe doing an inspection before you close on the home. What's that? I mean, really, Dan? Shouldn't you just wave that to get in the house? I mean, it's a house. How bad could it be? Well, I mean, 70%, 77% of home buyers face. <laughs> I th so I thought this was two part. I'll wait until we get into the actual article, but I think there's two parts to this. <clears throat> okay. Not so the article just says, that they waived the inspection. The article says if you moved into your new home or are in the market for a house, beware that 77% of homeowners have dealt with an unexpected issue that's requiring the shelling out of money to repair their first in their first year of owning the house. This is according <laughs> to a recent survey from a firm Hippo. Um, many buyers are vastly unprepared for what's awaiting them as homeowners, said Courtney Clusterman. Uh, she's the home insights expert at Hippo. And by the way, on this survey, it says at the end of the article, they interviewed a thousand, I guess, a thousand homeowners for this. Yeah. With demand for homes, uh, strong and tight inventory, uh, and interest rates generally low during 2020 and 2021, home prices have been climbing unabated. The median price range reached 350000 in January, according to the National Association of Realtors. That's 15.4% more than a year ago. We all know this stuff. I'll go pretty quick. Um, <clears throat> some buyers have ended up in bidding wars, and 68% of homeowners in HIPPO survey said they paid above asking price. It also became more common to bypass a home inspection or to make the purchase not contingent upon that process, said Can Steve Wilson, question? senior underwriting manager. Yep. That 68%, does that seem low, high, or right on to you that paid above asking? Uh, that seemed actually, I, th I thought that was kind of low. I figured more people would have to pay above asking. Yeah, I, I thought the same. As, remember, it's only a thousand people and there's 320 million in the country or whatever it is. But yeah, you know, so it's a small, small sampling, but I still thought that was a relatively low number. I haven't, I, I don't know, one, I, I haven't even written an, an at asking offer in a long time. Well, that's because you're in California. And everybody's leaving. Yeah, it's the mass exodus. <laughs> so I see. I felt that it should be sixty nine percent. Nice. Yeah. All right, you should get it done, even if it wasn't part of the purchase price. Wilson said it will highlight some of the things that you may need to pay attention to. First year yeah. home maintenance costs less than a thousand dollars, thirty four percent. A thousand to twenty five hundred is three thirty percent. Twenty five hundred to five thousand is twenty three percent, and then over five thousand was thirteen percent. So, I mean, <clears throat> that's not that bad. I mean, that's the amount of money. I don't, I don't think that's the amount of money that it costs for first year of home maintenance. It's not terrible, know, really. It's not terrible. The, uh, there's, that's a big number under a thousand. I think a lot of these uh, people that were surveyed were like surprised, like, Hey, I didn't do a home inspection, but it was only, you know, 400 bucks. It was a bunch of handyman stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, the rest of it is kind of like home maintenance -y stuff. Like be sure you do this to your house. Yeah. Which, Which is good. Know. It's informative, but like at some point there's got to be a, a dad or a father-in-law at some point in this mix going, dude, <laughs> don't wave your, <laughs> don't wave your home, home inspection, but there is a line. Yeah. In don't wave your home inspection. Let your dad do it. Yeah. But don't bring him to the inspection, <laughs> please. Uh, All right. <laughs> Melissa Mars said, I just had an uh, asking offer accepted last week. Wow. So <clears throat> I just wanted to bring that up because well, this market gets crazy. You know, we start to do Jersey things. Too. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Everybody hates the rain tax in New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, D. Jones said, I had a dad at an inspection yesterday. Tear up the inspection. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, I, I'm assuming that didn't go well, but that's funny. As dads, we know. We just, we yeah. just, we have professional expertise because we have a dad bod. He's got his, uh, <clears throat> his, he's got his Costco uh, athletic shoes on <laughs> and his high socks. <laughs> Don't make fun. Those are comfortable. Oh, they are. I have a pair. <laughs> Super comfortable. I have six uh -oh, pairs. Three that I use for yard work. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, all right. So stop with the rain tax, says Melissa. D. Jones well, says it didn't go well at all. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, in all this madness, I have not waived one. I've waived a lot of appraisal contingencies, but I haven't waived one inspection or home warranty. There's a lot of buyers waiving home warranty, too, and our brokerage will not let you waive the home warranty you cannot waive the home warranty that has to be in place um but the home inspection you can i mean because i don't know how it works across the country but here in california every house is sold as is it's just assumed as is so huh. i get a lot of 
seller saying, well, I'll sell the house, but it's as is. It's going to be, you know, I'm not making any repairs. I'm like, well, yes, every single house is sold as is, but the buyer has their right to do their discovery. And then they also have the right to ask for stuff. And then we have the right to either do it or say no. And then that buyer can walk or they can say, okay, well, we won't do it. And with the market being hotter, a lot of, we talked about on the show, Ray, um, a lot of our buyers or just buyers across the country were like, well, you know, that uh, dishwasher that isn't getting as hot as it should, that would have been an issue in a buyer's market or a more even yeah. market. But now, you know what? I'm fine with the dishwasher. I'll probably just wash things my own or I'll, you know, I'll buy a new dishwasher. So, uh, but you still got to have your inspection done because how I always say it is, hey, this house looks beautiful, but what if it's got lipstick on a pig and you get yeah. into the bones of it and it's, you know, the the roof structure's falling apart, the plumbing's horrible, the electrical's horrible. You got to really know what's going on with that house. Don't ever, ever, ever let your buyers waive an inspection. We have a little, we have a choice is how we list it. You can do it as is, which means the buyer could inspect it if they put it in the contract, but the seller's not going to do anything. Okay. Or now is it so... The buyer goes in knowing that, well, this one's sold as is. I know they're not going to do anything. Or can they still ask just to see what happens? Depends on if their agent actually read the MLS description. So they didn't. <laughs> if they do, then they know it's as is. Right. However, there's another box you could check that says normal working order. So that means everything should work. Right? Maintenance, like uh, the a HVAC, the hot water so heater. We have disclosures for that. Well, can I just say a hot water heater doesn't exist? What? There's no it's such thing as a hot water, water heater. heater. It's, it's a. It's just a water heater. A water heater. Thank you. Right. But it I like saying hot water hot heater. Water. That's, funny. That's if, like if, what if, comes out of a toaster. Toast. No, it doesn't. Toast comes out, but the bread goes in. You don't put toast in a toaster. You don't put toast in a toaster. You put bread. You don't in put hot toaster. water in a hot water heater. It's not a That's thing. Right. There's no water such heater. thing as a hot water heater, y'all. Let's stop, stop putting that out there. HWH. That that's not a thing. Anyway, <laughs> so normal working order means all that stuff is supposed to work. And then there's one that says home warranty, third party home warranty, right? Yeah. So so you're not saying that anything works, what? but you are saying that you're going to provide a home warranty. And now, what does that home warranty cover? Because ours don't cover everything between homeowners it's, insurance. It's the national home warranty company. here is just. It's Dumb. the same as all the national companies. And then, and then the last Pointless. status is like a builder's home warranty, which you only get for new construction. Did, but those are like the, those are like the, the, the things that the seller can say. Okay. Cause, but no matter what the seller is saying, that buyer is still doing an inspection, right? Uh, well, they have to mark there's, there's two or three options. One is, I think it's two options. Paragraph 16, you can go 16 a and that's as is, you don't have the right to inspect. You're not going to inspect. Wait, wait, wait. If the seller says that or the buyer says that? The offer. The buyer and their offer. Okay. They can waive their inspection completely. Right. 16B, can they can still get an inspection. And they but can still make a repair request. request. But yeah, they usually have to specify, we're going to do an inspection, but we're not going to ask for anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because, so, I mean, <clears> we have that as well, but. Yeah. So any, I, I just wanted to bring this up because a lot of times we see crazy things happening in the marketplace and there's unintended consequences from the things that we're consulting our clients do. So you guys should know that if you've been consulting your clients, hey, in order to get this property, you need to waive your inspection. You do, it's probably a good idea to check up on them and say, hey, did you find any un, unintended consequences from that? Any related expenses that maybe I could help you with? Can I give you a good contractor to give you a deal? Like help your clients, continue to help your clients through that process because uh, if you were the one counseling them that, hey, in order to get this house, you have to do, you have to waive your inspection, which, you know, that could have been good advice to obtain the home. They may be experiencing some things and say, man, our agent doesn't even care about us. They just wanted us to make money from us getting in this house. Right. Maybe even idea. though they had like a, a, there we go. I was wondering what Patrick would comment. <laughs> <laughs> home inspector. Oh my but goodness. Look at Alice home inspection. Uh, Patrick says, yes, there is a hot water heater. If there are two water heaters, they're connected in a series, meaning a water heater, water enters the first and is heated and then goes into the second and is already hot. But then the second isn't a hot water heater. It's just holding hot water. It's a, it's a water heater. It's a, a hot water maintainer, right? It's a hot water holder. <laughs> I'm going to argue with the inspector and say, no, I know I, I'm kind of out now that he coming. I'm like, all right, dude, it's does it count? Does it count? Yep. So, okay. So uh, anyway, that's an unintended consequence of this last market in the last two years, right? Yep. Which was brought on.
by the pandy and everything that happened. So looking forward, as maybe energy prices skyrocket, as rates do this or that, as as the war continues, as a professional real estate agent, be looking for the unintended consequences of how we're currently counseling our clients in relation to maybe a war so that you will know and understand what could happen if you give them this type of advice or that type of advice. So well, and Brian I just want to well. He does oh. just inspection for information. Like yeah, we're still going to do one informational purposes only. Well, that's great. So, but know that there's unintended consequences of all that stuff. But I have, I have a question though, because like, I'm just doing it for information. I just want to know what's up with the house. What if there's just a major problem that's going to cost me five grand on a thing that the seller should have addressed? Can I still, cause here we have, it's a contingency. So I can be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, yeah, you can back I wasn't going to ask for anything, but that roof is going to cave in in a year and a half. I'm out. That's right. You can back out. Julie so Moon says, can. I'm having my sellers do an inspection for now for the greater good. It helps with negotiation as well. So she's actually having her sellers inspect before they list. I know. So, and then I come in and go, I don't trust <laughs> your, you know, I don't trust your uh, uh, inspector. I'm going to do my own. Yeah. If you can do an inspection, it, you're not buying as is. I mean, we just need to get, I mean, even if you say inspections for information purposes only, uh, like Ryan, that's my best impression of Ryan Bocros. Inspections I think that's offensive. I'm sorry, Ryan. I don't, I don't vouch for Ray today on that one. Sorry. <laughs> so even if you say that and you inspect the property and the buyer says, hey, I'm sorry, we're going to walk due to inspection. What's the seller going to do? Whoa, 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 whoa. What was wrong? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly it's not as is. So if you're okay, a seller, that's what there, I want to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're a seller out there and you're like, oh yeah, we only are going to accept as is contracts, but we'll let them inspect You're that's not as is <laughs> because like, if there's a problem, a market. it's like a thousand bucks. You're going to be like, well, what, what's wrong with it? Mr. Buyer and the buyer's going to say, well, this thing needs to be serviced. That's going to cost us a thousand dollars. We're no longer interested. And the seller's going to say, okay, we'll do that. If y'all stick around. Right. Especially in a market where I just gave you 50 grand above asking. Yes, they're yeah. appraised, but I gave you 50 more than you actually yeah. thought you were going to get. I would like a thousand dollar thing fixed, please. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Suddenly no longer adds it. So just, I mean, be aware. But anyway, that's an unintended consequence of the crazy market. We'll see what happens with this war market. Um, but next up, let's talk about this. Uh, there it is. Uh, U W M, United Wholesale Mortgage Holdings Corp, sued two of its mortgage brokers who have continued to do business with Rocket Mortgage after forbidding them to do so last year. So the Pontiac-based mortgage giant on Wednesday filed a suit in the U.S. District Court in the Eastern District Court of Michigan against Kevron Investments and Mid Valley Funding. Yeah, I'd this is Ryan one of the Bumpers. the Detroit ones I found, or the Michigan ones I found. Yeah, I'd love Ryan or Ron. To comment on this one too. Uh, it alleges that the companies agreed to its updated contract, causing an uproar and an attracted a class action lawsuit last year by requiring its broker partners not to do business with Rocket Mortgage, Wisconsin based Fairway Independent Mortgage Group. Um, <clears throat> UVM says two of the mortgage brokers continued to originate loans with Rocket anyway. Can I ask a question uh, right there? Yeah. So, what if, what if, I mean, if I'm a mortgage broker, right, I'm looking for the best rate. The best package that fits my client, right? Right. What if Rocket provides that? But they agreed, I guess, to some kind of agreement that said they wouldn't even shop it. Well, the, okay, then that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> um. So you UWM exclusively sells mortgages through brokers, uh, the middle party that works with homeowners and buyers, compared to Rocket, which sells loans through brokers as well as directly to consumers. UWM has alleged actions by Rocket and Fairway that it says hurt the broker's industry, the broker industry's ability to grow long, long term. It's championed itself as a fighter for independent brokerages. Uh, the suit filed this week now have UWM going after those partners who says it violated the contract. All of our current clients are aligned with the all in initiative and what it stands for. UWM said in a statement, however, there have been a few brokerages who have breached this agreement after further investigation into each uh, following the a conversation with them, they continued to submit loans to both UWM and Rocket Mortgage. So they're enforcing a contract that was agreed to. Is this a legal yeah. contract? I didn't know people could do this. 
It seems yeah, like that's, a that's really favorite. where I was. Because I, I mean, trust me, I'm not super excited about supporting Rocket Mortgage, but it does seem anti-competitive. Like how many how many times have we supported Zillow? And it's like I, I hate doing this, but Zillow's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rocket Mortgage subsidiary of Detroit's Rocket Companies didn't respond. The job of the broker is to find the lowest rate and make the most sense, said Kevin Heal, analyst at Argus Research. The legal action, quote, might actually turn the mortgage brokers off to using their product. It's anti-competitive. It's what Ray and I both just said. There you go. And so when way, I at first blush when I saw this, I was like, oh, crud, they're suing real estate agents. They're not. That's I reacted the same way. I was like, oh, but it was just that they're enforcing a contract or whatever that was already something that was already agreed upon. But is it best for the consumer? Yeah. Well, a lot of these big companies. So there's some protectionism going on in our industry as a whole. Uh, you know, when Zillow came out and said, hey, we're going to sell directly to consumers. We're going to buy directly from consumers. I think a lot of major companies uh, and agents were like, oh, I'm anti Zillow now uh, because we need to protect our industry. I think the best way to protect your industry is to maybe provide better service to consumers and not so much to um, not allow competition in the marketplace. Competition, you know, as a capitalist, <laughs> competition only makes things better. And if there's a company that can do it better than you, provide better service than you at a cheaper rate than you, then you shouldn't. You should struggle to do business until you innovate. And that's what brings about better innovation. So uh, although, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of Rocket, because one of the things I see practically is that, uh, you know, it's hard for them to maintain the same service model as that a lot of our local lenders service. That was the most, that was a pretty CEO PC way to say that, wasn't it? <laughs> that was pretty good. Dude, there's some great CEO and yeah. CFO comments this yeah, week. Yeah. And speaking, Ray, speaking of innovating, is Open Door, are they innovating right now? Are they pushing the limits or are they going down the wrong rabbit hole? That's a great question, Dan. <laughs> I feel like, uh, so there's You're this, welcome, Matt. There's this welcome, Matt. Ha, get it. <laughs> I didn't even know I was making a joke. Nice. There's a, uh, there's an old show on, uh, SNL and it was a radio show with these two girls and, uh, Alec Baldwin. You remember this radio show? Yes, I do. They, they, yes, they had very interesting points of view and they were so soothing. This is before ASMR was a thing, Ray. Yeah. Very ASMR show. Yeah. About balls, I think. Yeah. Hot uh, balls, he, big balls, salty balls, lots of balls. Yeah. He cooked all kinds of, of balls. And anyway, that yeah. exchange that we just had that was very uh, calm yeah. right before the show reminded me of that. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Steven? Thanks for joining us on Clubhouse, bud. All right. So uh, let's talk about Open Door. Open Door revenue rises more than 1,400% in Q4. That's crazy. But losses mount too. There you go. <laughs> uh, Open Door's largest eye buyer in the U.S. It saw its revenue spike more than 1,400% during the fourth quarter of 2021 with similar percentage gains in the number of houses it sold. Though its net loss also combined, also climbed compared to a year earlier. The company's latest earnings report, this is on Inman, by the way. The company's later, latest earnings report published on Thursday shows that Open Door brought in $3.8 billion between October and December of last year. During the same period, one year earlier, the company earned $249 million in revenue, meaning that they achieved a year-over-year -year revenue increase of 1,435%. That's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. That's a 100% increase is doubling. They 14 times that, right? That's amazing. Yeah, it's almost like a giant player in the industry totally went out of business. The report further shows that the Possibly. company purchased 9,639 homes in the fourth quarter. That's up 378%. And it sold 9,794 homes. That's a amazing. Year -year jump. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Dude. It sold like 160 more homes than it purchased. That's awesome. Like they're killing it, right? How do they do that? Well, just that's left over from the year before. Or whatever. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> Race <Right>, away. <laughs> Despite the CEO's... Wait, wait, what? What is this? What does this paragraph start off with, Ray? Uh, despite. 
Okay, <laughs> here we go. Well, I, I guess I should let me let me finish the good stuff for all <laughs> of 2021. Open Door brought in eight billion dollars in revenue. That's up 211 percent. It's awesome. Compared to 2020. I'm so happy for them. <clears throat> 21,725 homes year over year. It's an increase of 119%. It purchased 36,908 homes in 2021, up 498%. Despite those major gains <laughs> in multiple categories, <laughs> Open Doors also saw its net losses rise. Uh, in the fourth quarter of last year, it lost 191 million. <laughs> significantly higher than the 54 million that the company lost during the final three months of 2020 and for the entirety of 2021 the iBuyer lost 662 million <laughs> up from 253 million in 2020 it's almost triple open door said that the 2021 losses were primarily driven by non-cash stock based on compensation of 506 36 million versus okay. 338 million in 2020 all right so <laughs> I, I never understand this so if i go to you ray right i just i have yeah. this product it's a we'll go back yeah. to widgets right i have this widget yeah and two years ago i sold you know let's just say ten thousand of them and i i made a good profit yeah. right and you're you're an investor you're looking to invest in my company and you're like dude right. that's that's a great start. First year in the in your you know in your startup, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then last year, I more than tripled it, and I sold thirty six thousand widgets. Thirty six thousand widgets, widgets, and I've also increased the 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 uh, the quality of the product and the price, and the consumers seem to be responding really well. So your revenue is more than three times, three hundred percent in two years. Yeah, let's rock. You, let's raise some money. Let's go on Shark Tank. Okay, but I lost uh, over a million dollars. No, it doesn't matter in this scenario. But um, people don't look at that in the same way I, anymore. I'm in. I'm in the red. No, 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 no. People, people don't care about that part. They just want to see right, the top right. line. I don't, I, I don't make any money at this. But you do make money because you're going to have a series of funding that's going to give you money. So you personally are going to be totally okay. fine. Okay, me personally. Okay, then I'm good. Okay, yeah. cool. So you're down. Yeah. We can do this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. I never understand no, this. How are you still in business? If it's above, it's above my pay. Wait, read that number again, Ray. How much did they lose? They only lost <laughs> uh, from eight from eight billion in revenue. Um, in the fourth Wait. quarter of last year, it only lost. Oh, this is just the fourth quarter. It only lost one hundred ninety one million. Don't keep going. What's the big number? Um, so they. So in the entirety of 2021, so they, well, did I tell you that they had 8 billion in revenue? <laughs> but, but they, but that's what came in. But what went out was over 8 billion. Well, I'm just going to say the expenses were like 8 billion, 662 million. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't. They understand. had a top line revenue of 8 billion with expenses only totaling 8 billion, 662 million. <laughs> So if they were a home buyer, they couldn't yeah. qualify for a mortgage because they have more going out than coming in. <laughs> I mean, they got <laughs> stock though. But so, <laughs> oh, by the way, I have that. If I don't know if you want to skip to the end, but uh, heading into Thursday's earning reports, open door shares were trading just below $11, by the way. Yeah, Th that was a great. Okay, ready, ready? That was up for the day but around a third of what shares were fetching a year ago when open door and many other real estate companies hit all time highs. And they're now at $10 at the actual close. So they're down. Yeah. Every, everything says up, but they've lost, they've spent more money or however you want to say it than they've made and their shares are down. And by all accounts, which, you know, we have well over 10 people in our be more contributors, uh, 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 messenger chat. Well, two or three of them were saying, dude, what was the one? They they sold the house for 1500 yeah. bucks more than they yeah. bought it for or something? Yeah, that, that happened over and over and over, right? Right. So that explains all the losses. <laughs> that explains it. So uh, in uh, Thursday's earnings report, company's founder, CEO Eric Wu, celebrated Open Door's latest earnings. 
saying, quote. Yeah, he's, like you said, Ray, I'm going to do great. Yeah. We saw significant and durable shift in demand for our, our digital product, demonstrated our market leadership, and delivered exceptional results. He also argued that, quote, we are just we are still just scratching the surface of our opportunity to transform <laughs> one of the largest, most antiquated industries in the U.S. So then everyone goes, OK, well, if they're only scratching the surface, I'm going to throw another million at them. Yeah. Let me tell you how to make money in real estate. Oof. It is to have your primary, the core of your business be a loss leader. So in this new idea, I'm actually going to launch a new company called the uh, I win real estate agency. Mm -hmm. And with the I win real estate agency, I'm actually going to pay you to list your house with me. Yep. Right. Yeah. So my top line revenue is going to be insane. But I'm going to pay everyone that we list their property and pay them a thousand dollars. Okay. Right. So if I list like 2,600 properties, you're going to have a ton of properties. My expenses are only $26,000. But look at all the homes I've sold. Right. Is that math right? Or is it 26,000? 26, no, it would be 260,000. Whatever. No, yeah, 200. You'd add. But look at all the homes I've sold. That's what's happening. Right. And then they're saying, no, 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 we're going to continue to do this because we're going to change the market. And they just keep a cue saying for innovators out there. In order to change a market, the product you have should be innovative in the space <laughs> to increase service to consumers while also enticing those who deliver services to participate with you because they can make a living doing it. Right. If your company is losing money at the wazoo, you're, you can't sustain yourself and pay people to provide the service that you think you're providing. And I don't care who you are or how good you are. You cannot continue to run a company that sells houses for less than they bought them for. Mm. Hello, found Espe out. Especially 9,000 of them. Yeah, I told, I told you, I have a couple around here. All of them. All of them way overpaid. And I'm talking specifically Open Door, not when Zillow was in the game and not Redfin or whatever the other... Is there open door, op red door? I don't know. Anyway, um, and all of them, they bought and then they listed it crazy high. Like, well, we're going to get all our money back. And then boop, -a -doop -a -doop, over the course of two or three weeks, the house sits and sits and sits, which in this market, and these aren't bad houses, but in this market, are houses sitting? No, no. Doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop. They finally got back down to where the market was and ended up taking a loss. And by all yep. accounts on the ones I've, uh, research they've lost anywhere from three thousand dollars. I mean, just on purchase price to sale price, three to twelve thousand dollars was the highest. So, so okay. Uh, well, so speaking of companies losing money, I actually like this idea, but it's not doing so hot either. It's good. Porch. Porch's 2021 losses top 109 million. It's a company that keeps an eye on expansion. But We're losing 109 million, but we want to expand. I don't get it. <clears throat> I don't know. So I, I mean, I like, I like their idea. Um, let's see. The company posted a net loss of just over 109 million. It's first year, about 20% of that coming from the final three months of, of the, of the year. Porch officials said in a call with investors that they're happy with the company's growth and expected rapid expansion of the coming year would help it work its way around toward profitability, perhaps near the end of 2022. We're pleased with the growth that we're seeing, said Marty Himberger, Himbinger, the company's <laughs> chief financial officer. Sorry, I, I butcher names all the time. It's no offense. Okay. Not, you're, you're, not a, yeah. you're not alone there, Marty M. Himberger. Burger. Yeah. All right. So uh, where's the section that talks about exactly what they do? It's uh, kind of at the bottom. I have uh, Porch is a real estate technology startup that offers a home improvement yeah. marketplace and enterprise software. It made its stock market deb deb debut debut in December 2020, yeah. shortly after completing a merger with a quote unquote blank check company the same week. <laughs> so a home improvement marketplace, I feel like they could pivot and to kind of go into more concierge direction. And if they mm -hmm. use agents as a central role, I think they could actually have something that's pretty profitable 
but I just wanted to bring it up because I think we've talked about them when they launched and then we haven't updated anybody since. Yeah. So I felt like we needed to mention that they're still there. You say they're still growing, but it does look like they have a lot of losses. <laughs> so there's that. We can no longer support these losses. I know. All right. So uh, next up. Um, oh, sorry. I got to change. All right. So judge upholds Keller Williams temporary restraining order against Mark Willis. Uh, for those of you who missed the show in the uh, last couple of weeks, Mark Willis was joining EXP. Uh, he still owns some offices and is part of a region for KW. And KW said, nope, you can't do that said, because nope. we have, um, even though you're making money from it, because he's retired, even though you're making money from those things, you know too much and have access to too much data that could get in the hands of <clears throat> our competitor. Then he said, okay, fine, buy me out. And they said, right. no, we're not going to buy you out. So, uh, you know, what they have now is basically a delay. Uh, there's supposed to be some discovery until April 19th. Um, Are this, they just um, hoping he's going to forget all the stuff he knows? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I get it. I mean, so, so for I mean, also, orders. This was started, wasn't EXP started? Was it the CFO, the CTO, someone from Keller Williams? I don't know, but I know their logo came from Logo Arena because I found it. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a little bit of there's a little bit of history for you. Yeah. Um, the two page order explained that both Keller Williams and EXP Realty uh, motion to extend the TRO to give them more time to prepare for discovery, which will require Keller Williams founder Gary Keller and several other executives to provide sworn out of court oral statements regarding their claim that Willis's potential move to EXP would damage the Texas based brokerage. Uh, quote, it is therefore order. Oh, there's the, the actual order. The struggle between the two brokerages started in January when Keller Williams sent Willis and EXP a letter threatening legal action after learning that Willis is planned to join the rival firm. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, so it, KW said that Willis's ownership stake in franchise in two regions gave him access to more than 150 confidential data reports that could cause irreparable damage. KW RIs, intellectual property, confidential information, goodwill, and system. If shared with the EXP. Yeah. Then the EXP says, well, he tried to sell it and y'all wouldn't buy it. Right. So. Yeah. Like I'll just buy, I don't want any, anything to do with KW anymore. I want to move on. No. Now that has other ramifications in itself because if it then becomes worthless on the secondary market, <clears throat> then all the other franchise owners are going to be like, well, whoa, what if we try to sell our portions? What's going to happen? Right. Well, if they're not going to EXP, then. Huh. Yeah. Um, let's see. Ellis Home Inspections. Oh, this is about the previous article. Sorry, yeah, it says Porch just bought residential warranty service the 28th for $33 million. Yeah, that was in there too, by the way. Yeah. Um, the provider of the 90-day warranties many home inspectors offer. They want the inspection data to harass buyers that are vulnerable to home maintenance needs in the future. There you go. That's a smart play. Yeah. <clears throat> I may or may not like it, but it's a smart play. But not if they keep losing money. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. So that's kind of the update there. They're still stalled out until April 19th. Then we're going to find more about that. But the only reason why we wanted to cover it, is because that's also something we've covered in the past, just felt like updating you on that. Now, this is a... <clears throat> Story, not story, I think. Wouldn't you say? Yeah, that's something we need to mention. Okay. So let's quickly mention this. This will be the last story of the day, and uh, then we'll let you guys go. <laughs> As if everyone's waiting by their computer in order to be allowed to leave. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Keller Williams sees volume rise and transactions dip. <laughs> In Q4. Is that what you saw in your personal business? Volume rise, transactions dip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the company also finished the year with 188,121 agents across the world. Though it didn't mention uh, if or when it might go public. Um, final three months of 2021 look very similar to the previous three months uh, for KW and the company's number of closed transactions dipping 
and the sales volume rising according to earnings report. So, okay, the reason why sales volume rises is because the market overall had a rise in sales volume. The reason why inventory or the reason why there was a dip in the number of units is likely due to low inventory. But um, <clears throat> they're almost a public company, so this is being more closely scrutinized, I guess you could say. However, despite the dip in transactions, fourth quarter sales volume was actually up 11.5% year over year in English speaking North American, North America to 138,009 billion, 138.9 billion. Uh, the changes in volume and transactions likely reflect the fact that the final months of the year tend to be slower in the housing market. So this, this year, it was kind of slow in the last three months, but I think it was there was still a little bit of the pandy excitement extended. So it wasn't that slow. I actually had a pretty good end of the year, but that's because I worked really hard for 90 days straight. I don't know if you guys recall that, but I did like a 90 day burn thing. Yeah. And I had a really great fall because of all that. Right. I'm doing uh, a 365 day burn thing right now. It's pretty crazy. There you go. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mentally, I'm not great, but you know, monetarily, I'm doing awesome. <laughs> Uh, Keller, Keller Williams, President Mark King, was also upbeat on the report, uh, noting that the average income of the agents as a company exceeded the industry median, 43330 Um, You can't live on that. Uh, we're very proud to report our gross commission income per agent reached uh, 700, or Cindy, sorry, I can't read numbers today, 77,800 in the fourth quarter. Number go last increase. names. Yeah. I read King. <clears throat> At the head of KW added the head of KWX, uh, Jason Abrams quote. We're very proud of our continuing market share gains. That's pretty much a puff piece. <laughs> yeah. I, can I point something out? We just had our R4 convention. That's Remax. Yeah. Kind of like our family reunion. Uh, I didn't go cause I don't go do stuff like that. <laughs> uh, I don't like to Good do thanks coke, for your support. So. What? Adam, oh, he's not there anymore. I was fixed to say Adam thanks you for your support, but he's he's gone now. Yep. Uh, a major first. Remax agents close over two million transaction sides in 2021. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. Uh, announced, and it's uh, it hits a new high for for us and also the entire real estate industry. Never been done before. Huh. Why yeah. not on Inman? Uh, because I don't know. I think I don't think Inman likes Remax. I really don't. Mm -hmm. You should mention them. Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> it's uh, two million total transaction sides for the company. A milestone no other real estate brand has ever reached. President and CEO Nick Bailey, who's been on the show, thank you, and the former CEO Adam Contos was on the show. Um, they announced that the rousing opening general session of the 2022 Remax R4 convention in Las Vegas. So we're Did a we missed first. that Nick became the CEO. Uh, no. That? We didn't cover it. We just knew it was happening when we, we brought it up that Adam was moving on and that Nick would take over. <clears throat> and we just knew that. I think so. I think I'm surprised by the official title. We should have him back mm. on the show. I can we kind of predict that when he was on our show last time. Yeah. We were like, what are you he going was to the... do next for? Are you going to be the uh, CEO? And he's like, no, 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 he's no, like, no. no. <laughs> Adam's great. Adam's staying forever. And yeah, Adam yeah. was going to stay forever, yeah. but wants to do other things. Uh, but, you know, he was the CCO, the chief, customer officer yeah. right not, yeah something like that yeah a great like dude it. so yeah i'll work on getting him on the show again cool well that's all the news for today's show if you're watching the replay we'd love you uh to comment let us know what you think of these articles uh like i said if you're watching the replay you can always go back and kind of comment at the time stamps that are down at the bottom be sure you subscribe hit the bell so you're notified of when we go live. We should be live next week. So I don't think I have anything major happening. So we'll be back. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to be a part of the Be More Contributors group, also let us know that. We'll add you to the group chat and to the little Facebook group that we have for that. Um, Dan, could you tell everybody where they can find you before we go? Uh, D-Letter Grox is right here at the bottom. D-L-U-D-W-I-G-R-O-C-K-S. It's everywhere, but really just Instagram. Go follow me on Instagram. I don't really post much real estate related content. It's kind of is dumb stuff I think of and then funny reels. And then every now and then I'm like, oh yeah, here, I'm also a real estate agent. Oh, and I also coach high school softball and I have my own travel team too. So keep there up. You go. Right, where can they find you? I need to apologize to Bobby. I was trying to bring you up and it wasn't working and now I see the hand's still up. So I apologize that we missed you this show, but hopefully we'll get you next show. That's Bobby Leach.
Thanks for thanks for listening. Um, <clears throat> if you're on uh, Clubhouse, you can always search my name, Ray Ellen. You can also just hit me in the face and follow me there. Hold Be on. sure you're following the Real Estate Networking Club with the little greenhouse at the top. I already um, follow. I am Ray Zorbeck, R A Y Z O R B A C K, on uh, Instagrams. So that's probably the best way to reach out to me. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for watching. Thanks, D. Thank you guys in the uh, Clubhouse. If you are in Clubhouse, follow all those uh, moderators up there because those are people we trust that do good work. That's why Ray's <laughs> nose is burned right there. <laughs> That's it. He went really fast wearing that and covering up the beard, but didn't cover the nose. And then yeah. his nose got burnt right there. You can see even that picture is yeah. right because these little, little, I have a little redness in the cheeks here. Yeah. Just a little bit of redness in the cheeks because that's how far the goggles come down. And if you, if you don't follow Ray, it's <clears> this time of year, you get this photo. Two months ago, you get the Santa photo. He, he's got the. Yeah, there's a pattern. You're yeah. about to get the uh, flower photo. So you don't want to miss that, y'all. Yeah, wait, we wait for the change. We announce it every year. It's awesome. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. We'll see everybody later. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs>